trouble. Listen, that worship is worth it. First time in a long time, yes. I saw people pressed in and said, "Whatever's going on, I'll leave it out there." Yes. And I'm going to test the gate this Bible this morning. God, I promise you, that can happen every Sunday. Yes. These musicians, they labor in rehearsal and in prayer. These worship singers labor in rehearsal and in prayer. They're constant. It's consistent. Imagine if we were consistent on Sunday morning. What could happen in this place? I'm not much of a choir at all, but the, the moment our tears started to fall from our face is because the Lord was speaking. He said, now healing is about to take place. There's going to be an exchange of spirit. Because I've heard you, and now you have my attention. I heard the Lord say, I've heard you Sunday after Sunday, but now you have my attention. He said, this is when healing begins to take place. And here it is, you would thought that somebody had to lay hands on you for healing to manifest. Lord, thank you. You thought you had to go through a bunch of rules and regulations and ceremonies for healing to take place. He said the sound of worship from the house this morning. Literally tapped into where healing is. If I were you, I would leave this place today without asking for it. If I were you, I would leave this place without asking God to heal whatever is in your life that needs to be healed all the time. It may not even be physical. Some of us may be broken hearted. If I were you, I wouldn't leave this place without asking God to heal the very part of our heart that's been broken. Some of us may need our peace restored. If I were you, I wouldn't leave this place today without asking God to touch us and heal that peace. Literally said that he walked through this thing of pews, waiting on someone to touch the hill of this garden on this morning. If you leave here not changed, it's your fault. If you leave here not delivered, it is your fault. If you leave here not set free, it is all your fault. Say so amen, verse on you. Yes, yeah, all right. On the 7th of October, I just want to give you two announcements. The police department will be here. Um, don't worry, nobody's in trouble. Um, <laughs> police, no, nobody's in trouble. <laughs> They're coming to do a, it's a nationwide thing, Faith and Blue. Police departments across the nation are coming to houses of worship to do community events, picnics. And so they asked if they could use more of life to do the picnic here. And I said, of course, come on, what do you need from us? They said, we don't need anything. We're going to bring a grill, we're going to bring some chairs and tables and games for the kids. One of the things that, that we, we stressed to them beforehand, uh, when, when this police chief first became chief, and he wanted to figure out a way to reach the kids and reach the community. He says, because they're all afraid of us. And I said, well, part of the reason why is the only time they see you in the neighborhood is if it's something wrong. They're not afraid of the ice cream man. We're not afraid of the taco truck. So uh, uh, I said, maybe if you came by uh, to say hello, maybe if you came to a couple of the football games, and maybe if you just came into the community and interacted, maybe things would start to shift a little bit. And so they have this bright idea where they're going to bring a couple of squad cars out and they're going to let the kids get in and push the buttons and tour and all that kind of stuff. And I said, okay, that'd be cool. Is that only the kids? Can I? I always wanted to see what was on that laptop. Because they are always on it. So I just wanted to see what, what games they got on that laptop. But uh, on the 7th, from 5 to 8 p.m., they'll be here. So if you're not doing anything, I would ask that you come on down and please bring your kids. Please bring your kids. They are trying to be more active on uh, in our youth programs across the city. And so you see police officers, and they have to be in uniform at our junior All-American football games and all that kind of stuff. But they, they're just worried that everyone's so afraid of them. And they're really there just to enjoy the game and be a part of the community. 
community. So if you can, just come out and say hello, right? Get a hot dog and whatever, and push the buttons in the squad car, all right? And uh, Brother Eddie, he just opened a door for someone in the back. On first Sunday, Brother Eddie will officially become Deacon Eddie. Right? Yes, I'll clean the church. 
We first get saved, yes, I'll sweep the parking lot. We first get saved, yes, there is no toilet too dirty for Jesus. But the moment we get a title, I'm no longer that, I'm now this. Yes. Leave that to somebody else. Yes. Yes. To the point where, and I'm just going to pick on myself out, people, to the point where people will marvel at the fact that I was carrying my own bag one time. What you carry your own bag for? What you want to carry my own bag for? You a bishop. They're supposed to carry your bags. I got two healthy hands. <laughs> Lift all kind of heavy weight. You mean to tell me I can't carry a five pound bag to my office? Because for whatever reason, in this sect of church and the body of Christ, yes, yes. we've gotten twisted to think that because you were given a title, you've been elevated and things are beneath you. Okay. Alright, if you want somebody to tell you it's okay to be egotistical, let us know. We will help you find a church where you can be egotistical. I promise you, there's like four of them near me right now. No, I'm saying, okay, listen. Alright. Mark 10 and 45, Jesus said, For even the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but he came to serve yeah. and to give his life as ransom for many. Now, this is key. He says the Son of Man didn't come to be served, he came to serve. How? By giving his life ransom for many. If I can park there for a minute, I can help you out. You're not serving if you're not giving your life. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Say it again. You're not serving if you're just, yeah, yeah, that, that's not serving. Serving requires sacrifice. How many, us, how many of us truly have said, I want to serve like Jesus did? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How many of us have died? There we go, we missed it. He said the Son of Man came to serve, and some tradition said, by giving his life ransom for many. Question is, are you truly serving if you're not willing to die for those that you're serving? I'm not talking about a physical death. He's not asking us to bleed for anybody. He's already taking care of that. Are you willing to deny yourself and deny your flesh to serve those that you've been called to serve? Who have I been called to serve? My brothers and sisters. Amen. Here's another interesting scripture about serving. Philippians 2, verse 3, it says, Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out for only your own interests, but take an interest in others. Amen. Amen. The scripture says that because we have, we're supposed to have this mind of Christ, that's what Philippians 2 says, the preceding scriptures. He says, so now, make me happy. Have this mind that Christ had. Be humble. Think of yourself. Don't think of yourself more than you think of others. Amen. Don't just take an interest in what you want to do. Take an interest in what others need from you as well. Yes. You're not really serving if you're not putting anybody else's needs above your own. Now, I understand there comes time where you need some me time. Yeah. If you need Bible for that, Mark chapter 6 will give you Bible for that. Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 will give you Bible for that. There comes time where you got to shut down and make sure that you're replenished. Yes. Yes. Please don't serve yourself into a coffin. Because those people will come to your funeral, they will sing, they will dance, they will shout, they'll take a program and forget about you in three weeks. Yeah. And that's being jazz. Yeah. However, when we are serving, we have to ask ourselves, yeah, I served today. Who did you serve? Yeah. I get this all the time from fellow preachers. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't my Sunday to preach, but I have to serve. You served? Yeah, who did you serve? Well, what I did was I, I pleased God with what I did. But who did you serve? Amen. Amen. Who did you push the plate back for on, to make sure that somebody else had something to eat? Come on, Come on. Come on. Who did you stop praying to God about yourself for to make sure that you prayed for them? Who did you serve? Come on, Just real quiet. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because we thought we were servants. Amen. Only serving ourselves. What do you mean? No, 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 no. I'm serving the Lord. However, you were serving the Lord in order to obtain favor from him. Amen. Lord, I'm going to do this for you so you can bless me with this. Ooh, when we think about it, we're really serving ourselves. Yes, yes, yes. When was the last time you stood in the gap for somebody? Right. Come on, Bishop. Serving. Serving. Jesus came from heaven, sitting with the Father, and said, you know what? Ooh. Yes. She's about to die in a nasty death from sin. 
Yes. How about this? I go serve and stand in her place. Yes. When was the last time you said, I'm going to put myself in someone else's shoes and stand with them? Serve. So what does they serve? Serve. Okay. Support me. Come on. It's okay. It's all right. Look, baby. The Giants won the week one. I'm happy. Y'all can't take that up. Okay. <laughs> Here are five things about serving, and I'm going to show you this text in Scripture because I believe that everything that we are doing, Jesus already did. And if Jesus did it, then we should do it. If it was good enough for Jesus, it should be great for us. Right? Number one, serving is not optional. You are not saved just to say you're saved. Went to a CLD football game two weeks ago, and they got about 60 young men on the team. Ten of them don't play. They ain't gonna never play. It's just not it's just not gonna happen. They just they just own the team because they had extra uniform. They're not gonna play. But they're on the team. They wear the jersey. They wear the helmet. So what that means is when it comes time for drills, they gotta get up there and go. Well, yeah, 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 that's what it means. That means when the star linebacker needs somebody to hit, you ain't going to play Saturday, but you need to hit today. Get on out there and get hit. You don't just have a helmet just to say you're a part of the team. You have a helmet, now that comes with responsibilities. You're not saved just so you can say you're saved. You have responsibilities now that you're saved. Once you got saved, you got a helmet. Now you're on the team. And God said, I didn't put nobody on the team just for picture day. Y'all know the ones on the team that don't play, but they the cleanest on the field. Yeah. Got the new shoes, got the good visor, got all that kind of stuff. Some of us look like that. We sit in church every Sunday, and we look like we're going to get in the game. And we're not really, we're not doing anything. But he said, just because you're not participating on Sunday does not negate the fact that you have to serve all week long. Yeah. <laughs> Saw a picture with a bunch of pencils. They were all sharpened. Uh, no, they were all dull, and one was sharpened. And the caption said, it's easy to look sharp when you haven't done anything. Ooh. It's a bunch of us that look sharp, because we ain't served. Yes. Yes. But those of us that served, we got bite marks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know, yeah. Some of us served, we got some scars to show for, right? And that's okay, because God said, listen, I called you to get dirty. I called you to get abused. I called you to get hurt because all things work together for your good because you love me and you're called according to my purpose. Right. Serve is not option. First Peter 14. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Peter said if you've received a gift, your obligation is to use it to serve others. Now, I don't have any gifts. I can't prophesy. I can't preach. I can't sing. How many of you know that those are gifts distributed by the Holy Spirit? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, you have a gift. When you said, Jesus, I do, you now receive the gift of salvation. And since you have a gift now, you have to use that gift to serve others to show stewardship in God's grace. Look at that stewardship in God's grace real quick. One of the problems we had with our daughter before this last birthday was that girl was running through money like water. <clears throat> she got her own check card and I, I transfer money over there and then every once in a while I look, how you ain't got no money with you? <laughs> and I can't let her go without money. So she gotta have something in her pocket. She got all her friends and all that kind of stuff. I guess she got to have something. And I look at him like, what's going on? What's it? But then I'm noticing every day is three sheen packages. <laughs> <laughs> that was on Facebook. Y'all don't, did I just, did I just Alicia Demon? They never heard about sheen, oh Lord, okay. Uh, <laughs> Amazon packages, all this kind of stuff. Y'all, it took a minute because the Amazon profile was in my name. So when the package came, it said, keep me on Shepherd. I said, I must have ordered something and forgot about it. And I was like, I didn't even order nothing. What is all this? Open it. It's glitter. It's nails. It's all this kind of stuff. <laughs> she, here, she in here now. So <laughs> and so we said, baby girl, you can't, you, you, you can't go through money like that. We 
work, we work really hard. You know, but you can't, you can't do that. You got to be a better steward of your money. What we're saying is, when we look at the bank statement, we want to know that you made good investments. You made good decisions with your money. The scripture says that when we have this gift, we should be, we should serve one another, showing stewards of God's grace. What it's really saying is, God is checking your spiritual bank account to see have you made good decisions with my gift. Yes. 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 something. Yes. Think back over your life this week. Have you used that gift to serve anybody? No. If you didn't, there's grace for you this week. Amen. Okay. Amen. Number two. Number two. Second thing about serving. Serving provokes others to serve. Amen. Hebrews 10, 25, 26, the scripture that says, let us not forsake the assembly of ourselves, right? That's the description we use to encourage people to come to church. But verse 24 says, let us provoke others to good works. Amen. Provoke others to good works. What does that mean? That means that if you see me serving, and then you see we serving, chances are you're going to try to find a way to serve. Right. Control the scripture. Anybody go to the gym? They type that you go to the gym. We're there. Yeah, okay, we go to the gym. Yeah, sustain. Woo, sustain. Boy, her son killing her. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Anybody ever go to the gym and get mad at the dude that's just sitting on the bench texting? Yes. 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 Look, anybody can say amen all service. That's the one, Bishop! <laughs> we in here trying to get this iron. Right. And you take yourself and you're texting, bro. Go on. There's <laughs> a whole locker room with all kinds of beer going here. But I used to get mad, and when I got mad, I'd really get mad. I was just, bro, you done? <laughs> no, because we got to, the Lord had to help me with my temper. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You're too big to be going up on somebody. Like, okay, whatever, well, mind. All right. Then I noticed, though, you got two or three buddies in the gym, and I noticed something. Hey, you see your boy over there? Yeah, he get on that bench for a minute. Get the dumbbells just go over there. We go over there, now he's been sitting there for eight, five minutes. Check in. <laughs> yeah, we go over there with the dumbbells, and we just stay watching. Ah, 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 ah. We look at the weights ain't in the head, we just make a noise just to provoke him. Ah, ah, you know, all that kind of stuff. Some of y'all heard it, some of y'all haven't. Those that heard it, be quiet or rebuke you. 
All right. <laughs> there was a there was a, a lady that went to church, and Bishop preached. He preached, and after service, people were talking about how good the service was, how good the sermon was. And so she walks out. He's outside shaking hands with his wife. She walks out. He says, Sister Johnson, how are you today? She said, Oh, Bishop, service is good, but oh, I just couldn't get into the word. Well, I can't get into the word. What happened? Well, first of all, the young couple in the back all hugged up. That's just not appropriate. Oh, okay, well, okay. Then Sister Jones was on her phone the whole time. Oh, well, we got to do something about that. We'll, we'll talk about that. And then, and then, you know what? Sister Christina, that bad little boy, he kept running around the church, jumping up and down, and all that kind of stuff. Why don't you put that boy in children's church? I didn't just even. And then, and then Mr. Trey was sleeping, the Nori Lagos back there taking pictures, and all that kind of stuff was going on. He said, Oh, well, you know what, Sister Johnson, I'm going to take care of that next week. Okay. She come back to church the next week. Hey, Bishop, good morning. He said, Sister Johnson, I got an assignment for you. She was excited because she just knew she was about to tell on everybody. <laughs> he said, when I get up to preach, I want you to hold this glass of water. The glass of water was full to the brim. Hold it. Don't let nothing spill out of it. Because the Lord is telling me there's a lesson in this for you. She said, okay. He said, then I want you to take this notepad and this pen. Everybody that you see taking selfies, hugged up, sleeping, cuddled, all that kind of stuff, I want you to write down. Because after I finish preaching, I'm going to take that list and bring it to the altar. She was excited because, you know, saints like to snitch on everybody. <laughs> service went, that man preached. After service, she walked by Bishop, here you go, I got your water, you thirsty, I didn't spill none of it. I know the Lord has a reward for me. He said, yeah, she, he said, but the list, I need the list because I need to get the people on the altar. What, oh, the list, the list of all the people that were smoking, uh, taking pick, all, I want all of it. She said, oh, you know, huh. He said, what's wrong? You didn't see anybody sleep? You didn't see anybody cuddled up? You didn't see anybody uh, uh, taking selfies? She said, I was so focused on my assignment. Yes. Yes. I had to try to get teaching nobody else was doing. Yes. Serving keeps me humble yes. to the point where I'm so focused on what God is calling me to do. I, got this, I don't have time to pay attention to nobody else. Yes. Some of y'all know everybody in business yes. because you won't serve. Right. Two claps. Some of y'all know everybody's business. God sends you 
when it assigned it to a group of people that just cannot stand you. Now before you tell me you're going to turn up and flip tables, understand this, Jesus went into Jerusalem knew when they were looking to kill him because he had an assignment to fulfill. I want to serve like Jesus. That must mean that you might want to have to get involved in some stuff with some people that you just cannot stand. Can you handle it? What is it about us that only want to serve people that appreciate us? Yeah. I only want to serve people that tell me I did a great job. I only want to serve people that tell me how wonderful I am. I only want to serve people that pat me on the back and tell me I'm the greatest thing since life's real. There's no growth in feeding your ego and your flesh. As a matter of fact, you become so full of ego that you have no spirit in you whatsoever. Ego is intoxicating. Ego is extremely intoxicating. Yes. This is why Paul told us in Galatians 5 to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Because if you're not filled, you're, either, you're full of something. Yes. <laughs> Some of y'all know everybody's business. Serving should never be done to bring joy or accolades to ourselves. No. Yeah. It should be done to glorify God. Yeah. Paul said, Paul said, let nothing be done out of selfish ambition. John said that I must decrease so that he may increase. Yeah. If you make your serving about you, then you're now telling people that you're the supplier. That's right. That's right. You're the giver. And this is why some of us are burnt out. They keep calling me because you never pointed them to Jesus. You pointed them to you. Right? Right? Are y'all with me? Right? When you make a spectacle out of serving, then that does two things. One, Jesus said that the only rewards you're going to get are those likes on Facebook. That's what he said. They've already gotten their reward, right? But then two, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? The stuff that God sent you there, not with the sandwich, but with the gospel. But yes. you put focus on you taking the sandwich. Yes. You missed the opportunity to preach the gospel. To Amen. Amen. Everything that we do, every gift that we have, is to point people to the cross, not to the gift. Yes. Not to the gift. Right. Right. So at the end of the day, while they may be grateful that you dropped off clothes, you need to make sure that you bless some Jesus there. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Because those clothes will fade away. Yes. But Jesus ain't going away. Amen. Let's look at John 13. I'm going to show you this example. And then the rest of the day is football. <laughs> I looked at her. She put her hand down. I said, you didn't cook, baby? John 13. Look at verse 1. Jesus is going to give us a blueprint on serving. And I love this blueprint of serving because it takes us through all the emotions of what we go through. Verse 1, now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this earth. Uh, he would go to the Father, having loved his own, who were in this world, and loved them to the end. The hour of Jesus' uh, 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 crucifixion is coming. Luke tells us that when he rolled his way to the cross, he was in agony. He was crying so hard that the blood was, uh, drops of sweat looked like blood on his forehead. He was in agony about this, this hour that was coming. And so now, how here it is, the hour is here. He's about to be persecuted. He's about to be sold out, right? He's about to get crucified. You with me? Verse 2. Uh, the, day had already put, uh, the devil had already put in the heart of Judas, the son of Simon, to portray him, and during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all these things in his hands and had come from God, he was going, he was going to God, uh, got up from the table. Verse 2. So verse 1, Jesus is in agony. Verse 2, now Satan has jumped into Judas. Yeah. Judas is now getting ready to portray Jesus. Jesus knew all things because he was God in the flesh, right? Yeah. Verse 3 says, but Jesus wasn't tripping because he knew that his Father had given him all authority. Watch. Verse 1, I'm about to be crucified. Yes. Verse 2, Betrayed. this one that I knew was a traitor, right. that I chose anyway, so I'm about to fulfill his purpose. Cold part about betrayal, it never comes from strangers. Yeah. 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 It 
It's always somebody that you fan and that you quote and that you kept quote. That's the cold part about betrayal. David said in Psalm 55, if, if it were a stranger, I could deal with it. But it's my brother. We walk in the church together. You betray. That's the cold thing right there. And so now, not only is he about to be betrayed, but he's about to be betrayed with somebody that he really covered this whole time. Yeah. You ever have anybody that you covered try to uncover you? Somebody that you've covered tried to expose you. You ever seen that before, right? Right. So now he's about to be betrayed. Verse three says, verse three says, but he knew that the Father had given him authority. Can I help somebody? Yes. When you focus on verse three and not verse two. When you focus on authority and not betrayal, you won't trip on nothing. Some of us can't go to sleep at night because we're worried about somebody who sold us out. Yeah. When verse 3 says, if you just know that I gave you all authority, you don't have to worry about the thing. Amen. This is how you can love them anyway. Yeah. Hi! Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I know you hate me, but I love you. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not going to work. Yes. <laughs> because you're like, yeah, it's not going to work. Yes. I'll still be here when you feel sorry for yourself. Yes. Ta-ta for now. When you get back, I'm gonna look even better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the, here's, the, here's the part. Verse four goes into the fact that Jesus saw a basin in the corner of the room. He went and took his tunic off, dipped it into the water, and went and washed his disciples' feet. This is why I said Jesus gives us a temple on certain. Certain will not ever be comfortable. He was about to be persecuted and betrayed, but yet he looked for an opportunity to serve. Y'all catch that? Yes. Yes. Serving won't be comfortable. He was more through mental and emotional anxiety and the rest. Yes. Because he didn't want the flesh of him, didn't want to go to the cross, but he knew he had to. But even in that, he says, even though I'm about to face something excruciatingly painful, I still have to look for an opportunity to serve. Amen. Amen. Number two, Amen. serving. True sir, will let you serve those that people think are beneath you. Here's the issue. They walked around in dirt towns all day. And when they came into a home, they had to knock the dust off their feet. But when they sat out at a table to eat, they didn't have chairs like we have now. They sat with their feet close to the floor and the table close to the floor. So their nasty, musty, dirty feet were near the table. I can't speak for you. I don't want clean feet near my food. So I go Come on. Come on. And so when you walk in the house, the servant had to go and get the basin and wash the feet of all those that had just entered. Jesus walks in there. The question that some people might want to ask was, why wasn't the servant there in this place? Yes. The question the true servant says is, well, there's a need I need to go fulfill. It. That's right. Yes. I catch that. Yes. Jesus said, I don't care that the servant's not here. There's a need. My title doesn't matter. There's a need. What I'm going through doesn't matter. There's a need in the house. What I'm about to face doesn't matter. There's a need in the house. I'm about to be betrayed, but there's a need in the house. I'm about to go and be persecuted, but there's a need in the house. Let me push beyond my feelings and fulfill the need that's in the house. How many of us can honestly say that we're there? And if you're not there, now is the Sunday to get there. Amen. To where you say, forget about how I feel, there's a need in the house. To the point where Peter said, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -uh, you ain't washing my feet. Yes. <coughs> I need to be washing yours. Yes. And Jesus said, no, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. If you don't let me wash your feet, you won't let my purpose be fulfilled. I'm here Yes, glory. Jesus said, glory. if you don't let me wash your feet, then I won't be able to complete my assignment. Mm -hmm. Imagine Ooh. if we walk like that. Yes, Lord. Yes. To where we said that if we don't serve, we won't be able to fulfill our assignment. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. Maybe that's you. Maybe you can only serve when things are going good. When everybody loves you. When there's an applaud, there's a, there's a, there's a section there that will applaud you when you're done. Maybe that's you. God is saying, I'm calling you out of that place. Oh, glory to God. I'm calling you to a point of grace. Yes, 
that says, regardless of how I feel, I know there's a need in the house. I understand that I have this gift of salvation. Now I have an obligation to use it. And I've heard it before, but I've never really followed through with it because when things got rough, I started, I sat back and I waited for people to come and serve me. What if I told you that's not even biblical? <clears throat> the Navy SEALs have a slight saying that says that when things get tough, what's really in you is what comes out. If serving is really in you, then when things get tough, that's what's going to come out of you. You can always tell what's in a person when they go through something. Oh, yes. So if you're going through and you don't have a heart to serve, we need to pray that God rekindles that flame to serve in your spirit right now. If you see yourself coming in and out of service based off your emotions, we need to pray that God rekindle that flame to serve it and sustain it in you right now. The thing about emotions is emotions do not have logic. We lean on our emotions like they have logic, like they can think for us. Our emotions only tell us what our flesh want to hear. And our flesh has no good thing in it. Amen. So if you're an emotional person and you can't serve past emotions, today's the day for you to get delivered. If that's you, just raise your hand. We're not going to embarrass you. I promise you. If that's you, that's two. That's two. That's three, four. Is there another? Is there another? Five? Six? It's okay. Six. Is there another? Is there another? Seven? Eight? Is there another? Eight more? Eight more? Lord, I want to be able to push past my emotions. Push past the fact that the people don't like me. Push past the fact that I don't even like myself half the time. I want to push beyond all that and just serve you with everything that I have. I'm not talking about serving this building. I'm talking about serving you with everything that I have. Lord, I don't want to fight with you when I pass that person on the street that needs something to drink. So because I'm having a bad day, I'm going to keep going. Lord, I want to serve you with everything that I have. If you raise your hand, would you do me a favor and please stand? Please stand. Don't be ashamed. It don't matter how long. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved, what your title may or may not be. Because I've had to stand in this very prayer line myself recently. So don't let the enemy make you feel like because you've been saved for 30 years, you're beyond that. No, we all mess up in this room. Is there another? Is there another? I need everybody that's sitting, everyone that's sitting, to bow your heads and pray with me. This is my belief that Satan wants to take the heart of service out of the church. Yes, Because as long as we're focused on church, we're not going to bother nobody outside. We're going to come here to our little country club. We're going to run and dance. We're going to go home and mind our business. But the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit fell and the church began, what started inside infected everything outside because they left the temple and went to the communities and served. That's where the church is dangerous. And that's why he's done everything he can to keep us from serving consistently and faithfully. I look at these people standing, and I want you all to think about how ironic it is that you've been able to endure betrayal in your family, been able to endure betrayal in sports, relationship trauma, relationship trauma, medical things. But when it comes to service, the first thing that gets you upset, you want to walk away from. And that's not no fault of your own. That's just how the enemy plays with us. If somebody makes you mad at work, first thing I say is, you ain't gonna mess up my money. I'm clocking in tomorrow, look you dead in your face. Y'all know how it is. When somebody messes us up in the kingdom, we walk away. And God is saying, is your paycheck more valuable than your soul? Father, we thank you for those that have stood today, for the word piercing their hearts. Lord, they're standing because they have a desire to serve you with more fervor against all odds, and these odds being their own personal emotions. God, we pray right now that they begin to tune out every negative voice in their life and just focus on the negative voices that they struggle with internally. Those voices that tell them, walk away from it. You've tried it before. Those voices that are trying to tell them that it's not that serious. 
Lord, we pray that these scriptures that were preached today stay in their spirit all week long, showing them that it's not an option. It's mandatory. It's mandated that we all serve you because we have this free gift of salvation. God, we repent right now, even those of us that are not standing, because we've allowed circumstances and emotions to stand in the way of doing what you've called us to do. But if we could just look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, how in spite of the fact that he was about to be killed, in spite of the fact that he was about to be betrayed, he looked for an opportunity to serve because that truly was his heart. If we could just look to him and draw strength the next time we want to throw in the towel, draw strength the next time we want to quit and walk away. God, if you could just give us a reminder of him on his knees, washing the feet of those that he served, in spite of how he felt, we'll, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be ever so grateful. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for grace. We thank you for this opportunity to get it right. Those under the side of my voice, if you agree that this will be a start to something brand new and fresh, in-house and on Facebook Live, just say amen. 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 Well, let's celebrate the Lord. Listen, I don't play games with salvation. Hell is a real place. I saw a video the other night, Bishop Carlton Pearson, and some, some professional, mental health professional. And from a scientific standpoint, she debunked hell. And we all know Bishop Pearson already believes that hell is not real. So, and they had over 5,000 viewers. And I'm reading the comments. And again, 80% of those viewers were saying, amen, 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 amen. How anybody can take sections out of the Bible that they don't agree with and say that doesn't apply to nobody else. Really baffles me. But what's even more dangerous is the fact that over 80% of the 5,000 people agree with them. Which lets me know that we have not served at a capacity greater than the devil has served his people. We need to be busy out there. We need to be busy. I know all the scriptures, but you can just tell somebody how you know Jesus is real because you're not the same person you was a year ago. That's good enough. That's good enough. You may only know one scripture. Read it and learn the next one after that. But we have to be busy out there. And if you are not confident leading somebody to Christ, link up with somebody in this church, in your family, that, that you can call and say, listen, if I meet somebody that wants to know Jesus and I'm not that strong to bring them there, can I get you on the phone? But we need to be busy out there. Yeah. Hell is enlarging it itself. That means hell is getting bigger. You know what, do you, do you know what that means? That means hell is anticipating more reservations. Yeah. We need to get busy. You know, we need to get busy. I'm gonna turn it back to pastor and I'm gonna go to the back. I love you all.